Welcome back you guys. Very interesting build tonight. I know for a fact that this is going to hit hard with a lot of the long slide owners. So we've worked out a lot of these slides in the past, the, the 17Ls, the 24s, of course the 34 is kind of a long slide, the, uh, the 41, the 40s. We've worked out a lot of different long slides and a lot of these have the same problem. We end up getting a lot of the same requests and that is can you do an optic cut on my long slide? Now not all of these happen to have an issue but several of them do and what that is is it's a weight reduction hole in the inside of the slide so let me explain this a little bit better okay so if we're to take an optic and I've got one here just kind of sitting on the, on the table if we're taking optic and put this on the gun whether we put it in front of the factory site or over the factory dovetail and we cut a new one that sight hole lines up right with I guess I could put it on this side to help you guys a little more lines up right with where that weight reduction hole is. So if you take a look at the top, if we moved it to the rear, we end up hitting the hole. If we move it in front of the dovetail, we end up still hitting the hole. So we're gonna overcome that today. We're gonna take you guys through that. We've done this in several different versions in the past. I've done something from like welding the hole shut and doing a reclean, uh, a couple other processes, which would be to put some sort of a blank in there with an epoxy. And we've kind of gone through the process, and not only on the Glocks, but on some of the other ones out there on the market, of what is the best way of doing this? What is the most efficient way of making sure that this is a permanent solution? So we're gonna take you guys through that. Let's talk about the work here just a little bit. Then we're gonna jump into what are we gonna do to correct that? And of course, we're gonna get into the actual process of the work. So first and foremost, vortex venom on the back, removing the dovetail, relocating the dovetail, raptor cuts on the front. Now keep in mind, the 41 is a 45. So a lot of the other ones that you're gonna see, uh, like the 24, the 40, you know, we're starting to get some of those 40 cal, we start getting some of those 10 millimeters, but this one happens to be the 45. Uh, so we wanna make sure that we're making good choices. Okay, we wanna make sure that we're not cutting too close to where the barrel locks up to the slide. We don't wanna crack anything. So we wanna make sure that we're, we're definitely making good solid decisions and we're keeping that rigidity that we're getting obviously from the factory all the way through into the uh, aftermarket service. So Raptor cuts on the top, we wanna to be able to see some barrel through there we don't have the barrel so we're not doing any barrel work but it does give us an option in the future to uh to expose the barrel in the event that the customer wanted to do something with the barrel we're also going to be running a cobra nose so interesting we haven't really done a cobra nose on anything this long um so we're going to cut a small cobra nose here on the front we are going to be able to see a little bit of the barrel out through the side raptor cuts optic cut we're going to be going with blue titanium okay guys so now that you kind of get the feel of the work how are we gonna go about fixing this hole, right? Because we wanna talk about that. Um, I'm not sure we're gonna actually show you guys a lot of the work, so let's kind of discuss it. First and foremost, we're gonna strip the slide down raw. Okay, I wanna take all the parts out. We're gonna sandblast that hole. We wanna make sure the hole is clean. We don't wanna have any oils or any uh, grime or gunk up inside of there. Then what we've done is we have created a wedged plate. So this little tiny plate, what it's gonna end up doing is it's gonna end up going down in here. Now I'm not gonna put it in here now because we're gonna have a problem. But this piece, this piece is actually tapered to a couple thou to where one side is, is actually a little bit wider than the other side. It's very hard to tell from, from here of what we're, um, of how that is set up. You can't actually see it unless you were to measure it because it's, it's not very far off. And the idea is that this would slip in and then it would get forced all the way down in. Now, we will still use an epoxy. We wanna make sure that there's no gaps all the way around. I don't anticipate that this plug is 110% fit to the socket because the hole isn't tapered and the plug is. So therefore, there means there's gonna be a little bit of a gap inside of there right because we're, we're basically pressure fitting one piece of the plug and the other part is not okay so we want to make sure that we get a nice even seal all the way around so what we're going to basically do is we'll epoxy that hole we'll put this in as far as we can get it in by hand we'll end up taking a tool that's the same length of this and we'll actually pound it all the way in okay so this is not going to sit flush it's actually going to sit a little bit recessed down in there we do want to make sure that nothing's going to catch on that in the future obviously nobody's going to be able to, to pry it out or pop it out of the hole now let me explain to you what this means, okay? So what this means is as we start cutting this optic, we're gonna go down lower, lower, and lower. Everything's gonna look pretty good. If my measurements are right and my notes in, in, internally here are correct, we're not actually gonna see any of the actual plug from the top side, okay? What's gonna end up happening is we're only gonna be hitting the plug whenever we drill a hole into the slide, and of course, 
we're gonna hit the cavity, and then we're gonna hit the plug. So the plug could be made of anything, could be made of titanium or stainless or aluminum. We use aluminum. Um, I don't think we're gonna have any real big issues with it. One of the advantages that we have with it being aluminum is we'll end up being able to drill it a little bit farther than what we typically would with say just the standard Glock. So what that means is we'll actually be able to get a little bit more um, threading on this side because if you, take, if you take a look at it and you think about it, we're only able to drill so far into this side because of the extraction rod, but this side is pretty much open game. So we wanna make sure that we're gonna go a little bit deeper. We're gonna be able to use our screws all the way down to the full extent of the threads. So that's what we're gonna do. So basically, we're gonna be able to go a little bit deeper. I think it's gonna give us a little bit more of a, of a, of a grab to it or just a little bit more of overall uh, structural support on there. I don't think it's really a requirement, but I think it'll be kind of nice as, a, as an added bonus if the customer ever did want to just use a screw that's a 16th inch longer or something along that nature. So that's kind of where we're going to start. We're going to strip this down. We've got to put that piece in there. You guys aren't going to see that. So what's going to happen is I'm going to do all that. Then we're going to get over to the cut work. We're going to finish up the cut work, which is going to be optic dovetail. Then we're going to go right into Raptor, right into Cobra Nose. We're going to do another sandblast, a cleanup and a color. Um, I'll show you guys what it looks like on the bottom side once it's under the coloring. Okay, so you'll be able to see, you guys got a kind of a feel for what it looks like now. We're gonna be able to see what that plug looks like once it's actually been installed. And um, we'll just see how nice it comes out. So guys, first things first, I'm gonna do a little bit of the prep work here. Then we're gonna jump over to the uh, Tormach 770. Let's get this project cranked out, see exactly how it comes out in the end. Right, guys well it looks like everything is back together let's go ahead and take a moment here just kind of walk you guys through the work I know everyone is not versed on terminology as far as what the cuts are called and things like that so uh, optic cut in the rear remove that factory dovetail ended up installing the uh, Trigicon up in front of it really nice setup over there matching Trigicon in the front zone here very nice co-witness setup of course the optics not on and of course the camera is also not going to focus but that's going to kind of give you a visualization there a little bit better we did the Raptor cuts on the top we stayed away from the lockup area we also stayed away from the thicker zone in the front here uh, on these slides they're, they're really thick up into here and then they kind of open up a little bit wider if you move these uh raptor cuts forward what you end up with is a, not a complete hole on the front one now we see this on all kinds of slides not just the glocks it happen to be on a lot of the sigs and some of the other models that are out there uh, but that's why we pushed them back a little bit further able to see some nice barrel down through there. Now, we don't have the barrel in hand, but of course, we're gonna be able to see that out through the side. Uh, Cobra nose on the front, really nice. Uh, ended up being a little bit more challenging than what I had anticipated. Uh, this just happens to be a little bit different model, so what we get is the distance between here and the top is not always the same on every slide, and uh, even if they are the same, what we end up running into is where the barrel has a different thickness uh, because this one's a 45 ACP, so therefore uh, the barrel's a little bit more uh, of a larger diameter than what we would get with, say, a 19 or a 23. So it ends up being a challenge overall. Let's take a look at this side. Really pleased with the way this came out. Guys, of course, we're gonna add some pictures to this. We're gonna keep this one kind of short and simple. Oh, hey, let's talk about the inside here before we before we skip it and forget it. So we ended up plugging that right down and through there, and uh, we got a little bit of blue coloring over there. So a little bit of a recess there. So obviously we put the plug in, that gets uh, compression fitted inside of there. We epoxy that at the same time as we had already discussed. That just makes sure that there's no voids inside of there at all and everything's really nice and solid. Usually it goops out a bunch of the uh, 
uh, epoxy so we kind of scrape that off the best we can and then what we end up getting is a little bit of a recess there just to make sure nothing's going to drag on that pin and also to make sure that uh, we always have the opportunity to make sure that when we're drilling and threading and things like that that we can see if it's moved at all uh, it's a bit it has a little bit of a recess there so it's a little bit easier to tell overall now keep in mind with the optic being mounted the screw is actually pulling that block up towards itself Okay, so uh, the only hole that goes into that block is where the screw hole is. There's no other holes under the optic. Uh, and of course, it's always forcing itself up. And that means it's always getting tighter and tighter because it's a wedged block. So pretty interesting there. But guys, uh, that's pretty much it. Um, we don't see a lot of love on what would be the larger model slides out in the market. So I want to take the time to kind of show you guys that. Like I said at the beginning of the video, there are a handful of larger model slides that are out there. And we just don't see a lot of work being performed on them because either they have a top hole or uh, it just happens to be that there's, you know, there obviously there's a weight reduction hole inside. So there's a lot of reasons why we don't happen to see the love for these model slides as we do uh, some of the other ones. So guys, if you haven't been following, definitely encourage you guys to follow along. A lot of unique builds that we, we end up doing. Uh, sometimes it's really major projects and other times it's pretty simple stuff. Uh, we do recommend that you follow on Instagram. A lot of stuff gets posted there first. We do recommend that you also go over to our Facebook, read those reviews, uh, kind of get a feel for the company that you're supporting and it'll help make you make a better decision on what you want to have done. You'll also have a better idea of what we can do because once you've spent some time on YouTube, Instagram, and Facebook, then of course you're going to end up seeing all kinds of stuff that you just didn't know we even offered. Uh, so definitely a good opportunity there. Uh, we do recommend using the contacts tab on the webpage or feel free to just click on the button. Uh, so once you go to the contacts tab, usually our email and our phone numbers are right over there. You're actually able to uh, shoot us an email direct. You can attach pictures if you do it direct. Uh, and that's kind of the way that we process those orders. So we do recommend that you use the email uh, as your means of communication because that's how we're going to send you an invoice if it's not on the webpage, or that's how we're going to give you a link to purchase from the webpage. So that's going to kind of be how that we're going to process those. Uh, feel free to let me know if you guys happen to have any questions about anything. Leave those comments in the comment section below. I'm always curious to see what you guys have to say about it. And uh, you guys can catch me on the next one.